getting a little worried that Mr. Annie News was not going to do Tensura content for, you know, this current season of anime. He just focused on Wishoku Tensei, but seems like he's got a couple of episodes compiled together. This one's called How Diablo Broke the Kingdom and Turned Rimuru into a Disaster Class Demon Lord. Let's see what he has to say. When I say Diablo turned Rimuru into a Disaster Class Demon Lord, what I mean is the way he meticulously crafted that image for the nobility of Falmouth. He had essentially taken all of Rimuru's feats in the past, twisted them in a way he saw was best, then fed them to Falmouth at the time Bald. he felt would have maximum impact. Really? I thought this had to do more with like people getting scared of Veldor's magicules. Well, at least that episode, we were kind of just like using Veldor's magicules as an excuse into why people are just getting fucked up and can't go there anymore. But was there a lot of focus on highlighting Rimuru and saying, you must obey this fucking godlike being? It was all part of his plan to break the Empire, then eventually Maybe the light novel. The as a nation under Rimuru's control. It's something the novel dives into very- Damn. Hinata looks fucking unhinged here. Damn. Then you see this right here? Fuse, right? The pen name, Fuse, which is the author, which is also a self-insert character. Fuse of, uh, fuck, the Guildmaster Fuse. You know what I'm talking about. Very deeply, and that's a topic I figured you might want to know more about. So, whether it be the full extent as to how these three were broken first, or the full explanation of Diablo's plans as given in the novels, here's a spoiler-free breakdown of what Diablo has in store for Falcon. Here we go, but at time. First, you mm. know it, I know it, it's yeah. pretty obvious. Ra the oh icon. shit, it's actually Raid Shadow Legends ad this time. I usually meme around saying, oh my god, Raid Shadow Legends, whenever it's like a webtoon or figurine ad, but Cinematics. here so, it is. As I'm sure you could tell, this video yes, is sponsored yes. by Raid Shadow, Raid Legends. Shadow Legends. Use Massive discount code and in use for your first free and pull and back to the main content. Let's get back to the video. I suppose the first and most important step of this subjugation was actually from Xion and her otherwise barbaric interrogation. Xion. If I start calling Xion Xion, would you guys get mad? Maybe I should start butchering pronunciations in anime. Like Xion Xion, it doesn't matter, right? But I'm just saying it that the way the anime characters say it. So instead of me saying like Rimuru, Maybe I should say some shit like, uh, you know, Western folks say, like, w w w how, how are some other reactors calling Rimuru? Rimuru. 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 Let's start pissing people off. We saw the end results of what she did, but what you're probably wondering is how she was able to do it. What the fuck? Well, in order to turn a human into living slabs of meat. Right, this is Xion's uh, interrogation that was, I think, a little bit glossed over, but uh, chef skill. Just cutting shit up, right? Pieces, I don't know, ingredients. You first need to understand the skill that made it possible. Master Chef and its unique skill certain outcome. This was a skill that directly altered the laws of the world and essentially allowed its user to change an object's nature to the way that they wanted. So, no matter how impossible it seemed for an object to reach a certain... Anything can become an ingredient, right? There was a character in Instant Death, the Isekai that we just watched. And there was also a chef class there. And his power is fucking crazy because, like, his thing was, I can make clones of myself because these are ingredients and I can, like, prepare multiple ingredients or some shit. Anyway, that's, that's kind of getting off topic. Xion's uh, cooking unique skill, basically, it's just, like, anything I can deem it to be just, like, an ingredient, therefore I can chop you up and you can eat it. State. If Xion could imagine it, she could make it possible. Imagine this it. This would then become okay. the natural state for whatever object she was altering, and it would be impossible to change unless through a more powerful law manipulation skill. Like so, Diablos. If Xion was to turn three people into living, breathing meat cubes, the effects of her skill made it so. It what was what was this reference? So if Xion wanted to make them into living, breathing meat cubes, then what? Xion was to turn three people into living, breathing meat. cubes. Is he a living, breathing meat cube? What is the reference here? Yeah, I don't know this character. What is this? Cubes. The effects of her skill made it so it would be a- Did this character do something similar too? Did this character do- This is Overlord shit? Am I getting spoiled for Overlord right now? So like, I guess this character also did something similar to what Xion did, huh? Cutting people up into- Turning three people into fucking cubes, a chunk of flesh. Living, breathing meat cubes. The effects of her skill made it so it would be as if they were born that way. To paint a better picture as to what this state truly entailed, the king was described to be strings of unidentifiable organic strings. matter connected haphazardly from one section to the other. Ugh. There was a rotting stench which emitted from his box, and whatever organs could be visibly identified That's were fucking clearly nasty. plucked out and glued back together without any hint of rhyme or reason. There was no other word to they describe deserve him this shit, other though. than some sort of sickening creature. 
I suppose the next question is, how is Shion able to get them to that state without killing them? And that's where we get to the torture part. Okay. You see, very incremental steps were taken to ensure nobody died from it. Okay. She would slowly yet surely peel back their layers of skin and muscles, then oh. eventually get to scraping the meat off their bones. This actually scraped the skin and the muscles off while they were conscious and they could feel everything? The pain? That's fucking insane. This was all while their physical pain was completely nullified, but okay. it did absolutely nothing to alleviate their psychological. Why was it nullified? Wait, why, 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 why did you nullify the pain? Because I guess they could die from like the pressure of pain, the stress of pain. It's just too much. And is it possible that you could die from that? Is that the idea? It did absolutely nothing to alleviate their psychological pain. She would okay. do so right until the three were on the brink of death, then heal them fully and repeat the whole process over again. Mm. So, time after time, Xion would disassemble their insides and outsides, then reassemble them to the Multiple unrecognizable times. state we saw in the anime. Repeat this until they were all psychologically broken, and what you have are three powerful Falmouth pieces ready to do your bidding. It was a true expression of body horror that- Huh, I thought that- they were ready to do their bidding because of Diablo's, like, uh, clout. It's like, holy shit, there's a being, right? And, and, and Ramen already fought Diablo. He already knows what Diablo is. But before that, the anime didn't really highlight just how much Shion brutalized these people. Just cutting them up, mixing them up. Like, they're fucking Lego pieces over and over again. It was a true expression of body horror that was done surprisingly 100% painlessly. Painlessly? Well, how? Physically painlessly. How? The state we see them in is therefore just one of the many reassembled states Xion left them in, and it was now their natural form, thus making regular healing ineffective. The laws governing their existence had been so incredibly twisted that unless the healing involved law manipulation of greater effect than Xion's Master Chef skill, the three would remain meat cubes and pretty And this much is forever. where Diablo comes to the play. The only reason Diablo was able to do so himself was because he was able to figure out on the fly a means to bypass it. How? Before he didn't even know the power of such an art and unique skill existed, but now he was able to see it was something that went beyond magic. He was able to see beyond his own limited purview of the subject and discover for himself what this new horizon was capable of, eventually okay. leading to the successful negation of whatever forces bound them this way. Now, part of what made Diablo- Wait, 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 so Diablo was like, okay, I don't even know what the fuck this is. I'm just gonna assess it. Yep, I think I got an idea. I'm just gonna now override it. That's basically what Anius is saying, right? Like, this, 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 what Shion did just goes beyond, like, the laws of what, whatever constitutes the reality. These bodies have been deformed so much, and Diablo saw and he's like, okay, this isn't, this isn't so special. I'll, I'll just fucking override it, easy. He was able to see beyond his own limited purview of the subject and okay. to discover for himself what this new horizon was capable of. Eventually leading to the successful negation of whatever forces bound Bro did it on the fly too, now, like in the carrot. what made Diablo such a fearsome demon was his fundamentally different behavior to that of other powerful demons. Oh? You see, usually the more smart and powerful a demon was, the more likely- No shot! These fucking demons are powerful and smart. Well, relative to the humans, because they did kind of trick us too, I guess. This is like uh, season 1, episode 25 or 24, when Diablo- with Shizu flashback, right? Demon was the more likely they were to try and show off. This would lead to them emitting an aura. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If they're smart, they're more likely to show off. Hold up. They're powerful demons. You see, usually the more smart and powerful a demon was, the more okay. likely they were to try and show off. More smart, this more powerful. Would lead to them they want to flex. An aura easily detectable by barriers, and that would allow time for humans like Rosin to know they were coming. It would give entire nations a chance to prepare and defend against them. Rosin would know. Humans like Rosin. Is there something special? Well, we know Rosin is fucking special. But is there some special class of other humans that would kind of detect like these demonic aura and be like, oh shit, things are going off? It would give entire nations a chance to prepare and defend against them. For a demon as powerful as Diablo to emit zero aura at all though, that meant he could walk into any city completely undetected, then re- He doing that freedom shit, just hiding his mana or his aura, I guess, in this context. So, that's interesting. That means that Diablo is so smart. He has his, intell his intellect uh, sur like, um, far surpasses any other demons. Why? Because Diablo is presumably stronger and more powerful than all these dumbass arc demons. Yet he's able to kind of suppress his own desires to just flex on them. And is able to just kind of go stealthy mode and just like do shit like this. While other demons are just like, oh, I'm so fucking strong. When they're not even really that strong. Wreak havoc pretty much instantaneously. 
A barrier was effectively useless against him, and his presence would bring calamity without so much as a warning. It was this that made Rosin so incredibly fearful of Diablo, and that feeling only intensified at the thought of the monster this demon was a butler to. This oh, true. Rosin to offer his allegiance to Diablo instead now, and I feel like even before this, they had the fight in season two. It wasn't a fight. Diablo straight up put up a fucking anti-magic barrier and just barehanded fisted him, right? And at that point, Rosin was like, wait, are you a greater demon? No, Arc Demon? And it's like, no, 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 no. Think a little bit beyond that. I'm a primordial. And at that point, I thought he folded, but I guess besides that too, like Diablo in the carriage, the way that he was able to just like override Shion's thing. And on top of that, Diablo's not even the main guy. Who is the person that Diablo serves? And that's how the world building and the power fantasy kind of happens in Tensura with all these different, you know, important details of how people perceive each other. And it's like, holy shit, if someone like you is this insane, who the fuck is your leader? This would lead Rosin to offer his allegiance to Diablo instead now and in turn result in King Edmaris doing the same too. With Falmouth now in the palm of this all-powerful primordial demon, it was the only thing they could do if they wanted to keep on existing. Now, it's important to know that part of this obedience stems from Diablo's tempter skill, mm. which is essentially just a powerful form of coercion. Yeah, okay, the anime talked about this? Fuck, there were some other important details in that episode, but this unique skill, tempter, it was like, he, he implied that it'd be really fucking hard for you to betray me or something. I forget the exact words. It invokes certain emotions like desire or fear, then use said emotions to coerce the target into acting whatever way Diablo wanted. Okay. In this case, the emotion was fear, and the message being amplified- <laughs> Mulan's face in this episode was actually so good. Like, Mulan's reaction might have been one of the best reactions in this place. Yes, Rosin sweating and looking back constantly and being like, oh shit, oh shit, that was funny. But something about Mulan, her entire face is just so terrified because you don't really see Mulan ever exhibit this kind of face before, right? I think it's the gap moe of what you think she is and what she shows in this episode. And the message being amplified was do what I say and you won't suffer anymore. <laughs> it was okay. a unique skill that actually worked relatively similar to Merciless. Should a person's spirit be broken in his presence, then with Tempter, Diablo would be granted full control over them. Ah, okay, that's a very good analogy. So Merciless, which is a skill that kind of like went away as it turned, it fused into like Beelzebub or some shit, right? I forget, into the ultimate skill. But if they already just like submit, right? If they kind of give up, Rimuru could just like kill him. But Diablo is like, I can just like fully control you. I can coerce you. I can tempt you into doing stuff. So that's the unique skill, Tempter, okay? Not control like some kind of puppet master, but enough to will them to do it. Wait, wait, wait! Not some kind of control like some puppet master, and he shows Laplace here. I don't think I know anything about Laplace, his skills. Is any news alluding to something here? Or is the control kind of going back to the, some Clayman shit? Kind of puppet master, but enough to will them to do whatever he wanted. Hmm. It also notified him. Wait, 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 wait. One control more time, one more time, one more time. Not control like some kind of puppet master, but... Control. Unique skill. Control. Laplace. You think that he was controlling Clayman the entire time? Like, Clayman did say he's the weakest of them and therefore he wanted... I forget the exact reasons, but Clayman was like, Oh, I'm the weakest of the modern Harlequin Alliance, you know? And I guess I'll just step up to the role and, you know, you guys are going to help me, but... Was that all of his own volition? What about Shal what not 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 what about Tear and Footman? What about Yuki? What about Karazim or Kazarim? What is Laplace doing? Is he controlling them? What's going on? I'm confused. But enough to will them to do whatever he wanted. It also notified him whenever someone under its influence was planning to defy him. Oh. So, should Admaris, Razin, or Rayheim even think about betrayal? You got a Diablo notification. Would know to be able to do something about it. Okay. This brings us now to the ploy within the royal throne area, and if you're wondering how Razin and the rest got there before Diablo, it's simply because him, Rayheim, and the king had taken a warp portal first. The they had teleported straight to the castle's warp chamber and feigned unconsciousness what warp portal? as ordered to by Diablo. The kingdom was in panic after having lost contact with its army, but now that their king was back looking like this, they were in an even yeah, it's kind of over. trying to fix him. It was only after Razan... I was like confused on why King Edomaris was the only one not like put together back in the carriage, but I'm like, ah, they wanted to like really make an impact, right? They really wanted to show the people like this is the state of your king right now. 
Look at this shit. You still gonna fuck with us? Now that their king was back looking like this, they were in an even greater scramble trying to fix him. It was only after Razan awoke from his fake act that the nobles could finally ask questions and get some answers. This was all part of the plan Diablo had concocted for him, and it was a small step in the overall scheme Diablo created for this country. One you'd be surprised to know he had actually shared in full with Razan beforehand. There were quite a few steps that needed to be taken in order to achieve it, but from what Razan understood, the end result would turn Falmouth into Rimuru's plaything. <laughs> An outcome yo. he knew he could do nothing about, and one that was set in stone the moment Diablo had chosen it. It was only natural Razan felt bad for his former comrades, but when he envisioned what it could mean for Falmouth as a whole, the potential prosperity for its people was actually quite inspiring. Even if it did mean toppling the current- I mean, I think that the people of Falmouth will do well. Like, fuck this, like, boomer executive council, though. They can all fuck off. Government, what would be put in its place could very well make Falmouth thrive far beyond what he yeah. ever could. The restructuring now, of the org. In case you weren't aware in the anime, this noble right here was the mark. This guy is the best one. Marquis of Muller. Mueller. This is definitely a fucking wig, bro. There ain't no way he's not bald. This is the shit that they used to fucking wear back in the old days. You know, they had all these like powdered wigs and shit. Anyways, he's the only reasonable person on this council that was actually seeming like a good person. And I think that he has some ties to different places. What was it? Key of Muller. An additional piece Diablo had prepped beforehand and okay. one that was in on it with Razin. Diablo was able to contact him via a connection with Fuse, and he would serve ah. as a voice of reason amongst the chaos. Okay, so he was planted. He was paid actor, and Fuse kind of helped that. Yeah, <laughs> he does kind of look like George Washington, right? Look at it, look at it, or like Johann Sebastian Bach or something. He looks like he's he should be on a fucking cover of like a classical piano music book, bro. The chaos, one that would persuade others to listen and eventually come to the conclusion that Diablo wanted. This would also give Rosin the opportunity to speak, which was for the most part the entirely made-up story revolving Veldra's around the and their army. Yep. He did preface by saying how they could save the king, and the way they did that was through introducing Yo. Hmm. Rosin had described the champion, as the, the king, on their behalf, and he was on his way here, bringing a potion which could fix the king. Ninety-nine point nine 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 percent. Even the part about the potion was an important detail too. He's just fucking doing an ad here, right? This is just a hashtag ad. Diablo is like, by the way, our nation has great potions for sale. Of course, the main thing every noble was concerned with right now was their missing army and the unknown fate that had befallen them. Missing army. Missing... What? Right, uh, the, 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 the actual thing is, you know, Rimura took him, Megiddo. But the excuse we made was they entered into Veldera's, like, domain. And then the magicules was too much. Everyone just kind of just like disappeared and died, right? It was an intentionally vague scenario Diablo crafted to separate Rimuru from it, all while using the talks of Veldora to connect it to him instead. By constantly mentioning Veldora's revival, it was only natural the evil the dragon. would think their soldiers had died for that. It was a genius move that not only dissociated Rimuru from the destruction of their army, but also provided a valid reason for how Veldora came back. A masterful play which manipulated the thoughts and minds of every noble present. Then again, isn't Veldora just like throwing... Uh, sorry, isn't Diablo just throwing Veldora under the bus right now? Like, he's just making him seem even worse than he is. Like, Veldora's reputation fucking sucks already. Because he was just like going around fucking shit up like back in the past because he was so bored apparently. And then a hero sealed him. But like right now, like, I guess it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. We're never gonna like redeem his reputation, right? This brings us Veldor was to fine with it. Finally made his appearance, and to yeah, explain why would he why care? It was the nobles couldn't believe Rosin had been saved. The main reason was because Rosin was their strongest. He was the most powerful wizard in the entire country, and his defense of Falmouth lasted for over hundreds of years now. How many years? So for Rosin, hundreds. To be bested was rather hard to believe, but if it was coming from him, then it had to be true. It was a story that became more believable when Rayheim himself gave a recount of how it happened. Rosin and I did everything we could to protect his majesty. <laughs> These two fucking idiots versus the actual true dragon Veldora, yeah? Rosin, and you got Baldi just going like this, protecting the king behind, like, come on. I know this is a fake story, but, like, you think you would even get this close to Veldora, bro? Naturally, hearing of Rimuru's negotiation oh, gave when them he appeared. to do the same, but Yom. if their only avenue was through Rimuru himself, the nobles began to realize just how badly they messed up. To them, they felt there was no chance that Rimuru would ever want to work with them. 
That's when Yom would paint Rimuru as the forgiving type, but even that wasn't enough to sway nobles like Carlos over here. Yeah, he, Carlos had the fucking biggest stink eye of everybody. If that Arden Marquis was the voice of reason, Carlos was the biggest fucking hater of that group. It was nobles like him that Diablo was looking out for, and if enough acted the same way he did, Yom knew Diablo would just kill all of them. It was all part of Diablo's plan to determine whether they were worth working with or not. I mean, why don't we just kill all of them? What is the consequences of us just killing all of them? I guess the people will go into revolt. We want to ensure a peaceful transition of power. We can't just kill these fucking execs. I would personally want to just, you know, just call the entire fucking boomer council here. Just like smoke them out. Put new people in place. Put our own people in place. Fuck it. Let someone, you know, have, I mean, we're already making Yom, you know, serve as a steward, but I'm thinking like, why do we really need all these royals and nobles? And I think the anime might have mentioned something about the politics, about the power dynamics of the, the nobles here, the royalty and like the different like big houses underneath. But like, hmm, that's true. We can't just be, that's right, right? The easy thing to do would be to just kill them. But then how would other nations view us, right? We gotta, like, be chill. We gotta just, like, be nice. Well, here's where, like, a really fun... Like, here's a really fun role then, right? If only we have someone on our side, right? For example, Diablo might be even perfect. To go and do all that evil shit. Just, like, kill him, right? And it's like, oh my god, Diablo killed all the, all the fucking people that found with the important people. And then what happens? Rimuru shows up. And then resolves it. Brings peace. So we have a paid actor, Diablo, that goes to fuck shit up and makes it look bad. And then Rimuru shows up and it's like, I got it under control. And everyone's like, oh my god, Rimuru-sama, you're so great, right? So now we're able to just clean house. It's so efficient. We can do all the kill. We don't have to deal with these bullshit. And then Rimuru can just be like, all right, I'm the good guy now. The only reason Diablo didn't step in at all was because to exercise force now would make things difficult later. He would simply take note of any who displayed problematic Later. traits, then likely plan to take care of them at a future date. Oh, he's taking notes. <laughs> he's, they're, they're getting added to the list. Uh, so anyone that's a little bit defiant, Diablo is like making mental notes. And one day, he will just like kill them all. There was always the chance Diablo would see all of them as worthless. And this was the reason Mirand and Grucius were looking so nervous here. What did you say? Hold the hold, hold them. First it was Xion. What did you just call Mulan? Listen, this was the reason Mirin and Grusha. Do we start calling Mulan Mirin? Mirin. Xion? Mirin? Rhymeru. <laughs> Miranda? <laughs> I don't know if Andy News is trolling me. <laughs> Sometimes his pronunciation is like, wait, the, what the fuck is going on? I just, it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. It's just that. I don't know. Some people get very heated about pronunciation. I think it's funny. And I just copy whatever the anime, you know, voice actors are saying, right? If they say it's like, you know, fucking mute on, then I'm gonna be like, all right, I'm just gonna call it mute on, whatever. This were looking so nervous here. In fact, with the disregard for humanity Diablo exhibited before, even Yom and Razin knew that if disrespected too much, Diablo might just end up killing everyone. In yes, the do it. It's an outcome they were both very Please. much to avoid right now. That's why Razin acted the way that he did, and it was the serious nature of the conversation which came after, which that would was so persuade funny, the rest of the nobles to accept what Yom was offering. An open negotiation with Rimuru and the nation of Tempest. Of course, Diablo wasn't actually going to kill anyone yet, because if he did, he knew it would go against Rimuru and what he wanted. He knew it would break the trust he was working so hard yeah, to build, that's and why that can't was a kill. risk Diablo simply wasn't willing to take right now. So, instead, what he came up with was a clever carrot and stick plan, and it applied both in a way which would allow him to- Wait, make... more, 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 wait, more Overlord? More Overlord spoilers? Hold up, hold up, I, I saw her, I saw her. Wait, 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 wait. The trust he was working so hard to build, and that was a risk Diablo wait. simply was bottom left corner. to take right now. Bottom left corner? So, instead, what he came up with was Here a comes. clever carrot and stick plan- oh, 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 This girl. I see her all the time in Overlord stuff. She looks like a succubus. One day, guys, I promise. One day. Carrot and stick. She does carrot and stick? God damn it, I got fucking spoiled. I can't believe it. We can't watch Overlord, guys. I've been spoiled. Stick plan, and it applied both in a way which would allow him to manipulate all the nobles. 
Diablo would then step up to fix the king, and while the anime made it seem like it was the effects of Rimuru's full potion, it, it was really just a show put on by Diablo intended to make it seem like that. So, the potion didn't actually do shit. Diablo obviously used whatever he did in the cart for Rosin and the Elder Baldi, and the potion is like, oh, look how amazing this potion is. So basically, yes, fake ads, right? Fake ads. <laughs> We're kind of just like pushing a scam right now. But the potion is godlike. No, 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 no. The potion is amazing. It's just, you know, define the, the, the laws of the world with whatever reconstructed thing, monster, this thing that Shion made, you know. The potion can't really do that. But for pretty much everything else, potion's pretty godlike. He was advertising the potion as Tempest's main export, all while performing this fake ad making it seem like it could heal anything. Yeah. In actuality, he was just undoing Shion's skill himself. A simple parlor trick making it seem like the potion- Oh, he was undoing it. I thought he like overrode it. Okay, so he undid Shion, Shion's unique skill shift thing in Michigan. He was doing everything. This was only because Diablo had overheard Rimuru wanting to advertise it, so in an effort to go above and beyond- Oh! He heard one time from Rimuru saying, Oh man, we should maybe like make some ads for this. And Diablo heard it, and he's like, My lord, I got this for you. He made sure to use this opportunity to do exactly that. Okay. A prime example of his attentiveness and willingness to do anything for his master. He, he really goes beyond the call of duty. Like, this is beyond his pay grade. In fact, he's not even getting paid. This is all fucking volunteer service. He's willing to just lick Rimuru's boots no matter fucking what. The biggest meat rider so far, I think. Master. Fast forward to Diablo's message to Falmouth, and it was the king's response which was the first step towards Tempest's acknowledgement as a sovereign nation. You see, by accepting Diablo as the official messenger, the king in turn accepted Tempest as a proper negotiating partner. It was okay. a significant gesture which informed every noble present he was serious. Oh, I didn't even fucking know. Oh, oh, that was like a huge thing, huh? The fact that he even recognized, acknowledges it, opens up the negotiations, and it's like, alright, they're for real now. Okay. This also worked in Tempest's favor, since by being acknowledged as its own state now, the fact Falmouth attacked it unprovoked made the public opinion of it shift to their side. Ah, uh, it was very we look good now that any of Falmouth's allies would support a nation that goes around attacking other nations without good reason mm, to. And that looks it bad for them. It also gave Tempest yes. justifiable reason to hit them with the steep demands we saw in the anime. The king's own opinion didn't really matter much on any of them, though, since though he was given free choice to pick whichever he wanted, not really. Edmaris knew they each led to the same goal that Diablo desired for them. It was basically the illusion of choice. The outcome would have been the same, so we just cough up the coins, right? Plus, when Edmaris thought about the torture he endured at the hands of Rimuru and Shion, there was no way he would ever make the same mistakes again. I mean, the poor guy was literally forced to eat his own limbs at one point. Really? So, in an effort to never. Re he had to eat his own limbs during the Chio make him do it? Was was he just so hungry when he was in this in this state that he just had to start eating his limbs? When was that? For experience that torment again, he was more than willing to follow through with the plan Diablo laid out for him, even if it did mean setting up his nation for civil war. This was a fact that Maris was more than aware of, and the true goal behind setting up Yomis. Yo, Napoleon. I think this is the uh, Napoleon reference, right, Mister? Bonaparte, Napoleon, I don't know why I said it like that, but he's on like some kind of painting with the horse. This horse looks fucking stupid though. Look, the mane looks cool. Something about the eyes and the mouth right over here kind of looks funny though. Setting up Yoma's king. Now, the absurd reparation amount was of course one of the ways to widen the divide between king and nobility, but the true purpose of it was a whole nother subplot Diablo came up with to lead the world's economy. It's an the interesting coins. topic I plan to share in a different video, but- Oh, we're gonna get a Spice and Wolf Anthony's video. Basically just going over the economy and the significance of what these coins are and how this will make us so powerful. One that's not entirely relevant to the Empire's takeover right now. The topic, that is, is the King's inevitable abdication, the lack of forces to defend himself against the inevitable revolt, then the eventual absorption of Yom and his forces. You see, by having Yom save the king's life, it was the easiest and most natural way to have the crown handed straight to him. It would be perceived as the ruined royal family handing off the job to a different generation. This would in turn make Rimuru their allies, and the only thing they needed to do then was fight on Yom's behalf. A simple Easy. job that required only a few more reinforcements, so long as no other nation decided to intervene with it. You know, wait. It was a matter of ensuring the nobles acted the way the Diablo church might do something for them, and as expected, that's exactly what happened. 
Edward was successfully chosen as the new king, and the, the brother. dissemination of information led to Remaru being seen as a disaster class demon lord. He had made clear Remaru was now part of the newly formed Octagram. Disaster class, and we're gonna probably, you know, we, we, we've been recently watching the old Anonymous Tensura videos about, like, you know, different tier list of skills and stuff like that, but we don't, I don't know, like, there's, like, threat tier list as well, right? Because I know about a skill tier list, we have, like, common, we have, like, uh, shit. What's after common? Normal? Greater? Unique, ultimate. Unique and ultimate is basically where that matters, but I forget. There's, like, a, another tier list, like, a hierarchy for, like, the threat you are. Ramond highlighted the fact that he was an ally to the fearsome storm dragon. His leadership was shown Sworn to be brilliant friend. beyond compare, and his claim to the Forest of Jura was the very testament to that. These were all feats essential to Remaru's image, and it was all part of Diablo's plan to build him up as this impenetrable leader. So, that was the first part of his plan to take control of the kingdom, and as I'm sure you could tell, it's He's all way too competent. exactly as Diablo He's way too good. It. His subordinates were working hard knowing betrayal meant death, and that in turn made it so he just needed to sit back and relax. It'll be interesting to see if things continue to go smoothly for him, but I'm kind of hoping they don't so we can see him in action for once. Yes, me That's too. That's pretty much it for Diablo's. Diablo, is, is, things are actually going way too smooth. I want some people to start acting out of line so he can actually pop off, but like Diablo's too fucking OP and the author kind of like benches him, I noticed. See him in action for once. That's pretty much it for Diablo's. Plan is that though, it? So I hope you enjoyed learning more about it. If All right, y'all know what to do. Please go to Mr. Annie News' channel. Like his videos and sub to his channel if you like. I'm glad that he's picked up Tensura. This seems to be the summary for episode one. And we do have three, you know, episodes. We're already three episodes deep. So maybe he's going to start up on the cut content for the other episodes too. And yes, I will be there to farm it. You don't have to come to every single fucking video that I upload and start begging on. Please watch, please watch. Motherfucker. You just click on a video to comment that bullshit and leave and fuck my analytics. It pisses me off twofold now. You're fucking begging and being impatient when you know that I'm going to upload this shit. And then you're fucking up my analytics too. But anyways, it is what it is. I'll see you on the next one.